In this video, we will discuss about implant fixation in total hip arthroplasty. Learning objectives are to know the methods of implant fixation, material properties and techniques of bone cementing, concepts behind uncemented joint replacement, and challenges unique to each fixation methods. We know from our routine arthroplasty practice that acetabulum can be fixed by cemented or an uncemented method and similarly femur can be cemented or uncemented. Now a quick look at the important material properties of the bone cement. Bone cement has a modulus of elasticity less than that of the cortical bone and more than that of the polyethylene and the cancellous bone. It tolerates compressive forces better than tensile forces. It has low toughness and hence cracks and fragments easily. Its mechanical strength is by micro interdigitation with endosteal bone. It acts as a grout and has no adhesion properties. The third generation cementic technique is based on the following principles. Bone plug and pulse lavage help to clear the debris for better cementing. Vacuum mixing reduces porosity. Pressurization is facilitated by closing the canal distally with a bone plug, proximally with a trochanteric seal and delivering the cement in a cement gun. All these processes help in micro interdigitation of the bone and the cement. A stem centralizer is used to avoid varus alignment and obtain uniform cement mantle. A suitably sized canal filling stem can then be used. The uncemented prosthesis can be grouped into bone ingrowth prosthesis or bone on growth prosthesis based on how the long term mechanical stability is obtained. Bone ingrowth implants are porous coated. Bone grows into these pores and provide mechanical stability. In bone on growth, micro divots allow bone to grow on and stabilize the implant. Either of them can be coated with hydroxyapatite. Being osteoconductive, it helps in early osteointegration of the prosthesis. To obtain this, it should be in a crystalline form and should be around 50 micron uniform thickness. Prerequisite in implanting any uncemented prosthesis is viable bone. Implants into or in the vicinity of previous radiotherapy is unlikely to produce enough bone in growth to get a rigid fixation. Other important parameters in bone in growth prosthesis are Contact with the cortical bone, ideal porosity should be around 50%, pore size of 50 microns. Prosthesis should also be snugly fitting to the bone and have minimal motion for osteoblast to produce bone. A gap of less than 50 microns and micro motion under 30 microns is preferred. Porous coated femoral stems can be of two types, proximal porous coated or extensively porous coated. Proximal porous coated stems fit rigidly to the proximal femur, producing a proximal seal and allowing proximal bone loading. When used with a polyethylene bearing surface, polyethylene debris tend to accumulate more distally and produce distal osteolysis. In case of extensively porous coated stem, fixation is more rigid distally, allowing distal bone loading leading to spot weld formation in the x-rays. Distal loading leads to proximal stress shielding. Polyethylene debris also accumulate around the proximal femur contributing to osteolysis. Please refer to video on tribology of joints part 1 for more information about distribution of polyethylene wear particles. Bone on growth type of prosthesis are usually titanium femoral stems. These are extensively grit blasted to produce generalized micro defects, which result in surface roughness. 
surface roughness provides a space for bone on growth and this is the mechanism for long term stability note that the initial fixation is by press fit technique to facilitate this stems are designed as double wedged taper stems important challenges to be noted here are implant loosening due to inadequate initial stability and fracture due to excessive insertional force coming to the fixation techniques this can be grouped into cemented which includes standard cementing and line to line technique uncemented includes press fit and line to line technique key feature in cemented fixation is micro interdigitation of the cement with endosteal bone in standard cementing technique the aim is to obtain a uniform cement mantle of 2 to 4 mm all around the implant it is applicable to both acetabulum and femoral stem in line to line cementing a suitably large canal filling stem is used compared to standard cementing the thickness of the cement mantle will be minimal this technique is applicable to femoral stem and is termed french paradox paradox because it has been found to have good long term survival in spite of minimal cement mantle this is similar to french paradox of presumed low incidence of coronary artery disease in spite of high consumption of saturated fats Another concept to know here is the interface concept when the femoral stem is fixed with bone cement two interfaces are produced bone and cement cement and stem in composite beam both interfaces are rigidly fixed in taper slip the bone and cement interface is rigidly fixed however the stem is free to slide within the cement mold to understand the interplay of mechanical forces in these fixations we need to recall basic physics on cylinder stress when force is applied to a closed cylinder stress produced on the walls of the cylinder is distributed in three perpendicular planes x y and z axis axial stress or the shear stress is produced along the long axis of the cylinder radial stress is produced along the radius of the cylinder which is highest at the inner cortex and least at the outer cortex the circumferential or the hoop stresses act tangential to the circumference and is highest over the outer cortex and least over the inner cortex now let's look at the interface concept in a little more detail in composite beam the axial or the shear stresses are high and circumferential hoop stresses are low as the stem cement and bone all form a rigid pillar there is a modulus mismatch at the stem tip which becomes evident when the load is applied coming to taper slip the shear stress in taper slip is low and the circumferential hoop stresses are high the bone and cement interface is rigidly fixed but the cement and the stem junction is slippery when load is applied the stem slides within the cement mantle to reach a stable position this is termed controlled stem subsidence this you would have observed in most collarless polished tapered stems also called cpt stems now moving on to uncemented implant fixation the key features are to obtain initial rigid fixation to allow osteo integration osteo integration provides long term stability the initial fixation technique for an uncemented implant can be either a press fit or line to line in press fit technique the bone is prepared to a particular size an implant larger than the prepared size is used initial stability is by compression hoop stresses 
in line to line the bone is prepared to a particular size implant of the same size as the prepared size is used initial stability is obtained in acetabulum with screws and femur by friction fit or interference fit using an extensively porous coated stem for safe placement of acetabular screws it is important to appreciate the quadrant system developed by veselovsky if a line is drawn from the anterior superior iliac spine to the center of the acetabulum and draw a line perpendicular to this line we can name the following quadrants posterior superior posterior inferior antero inferior and antero superior quadrants zone 1 or the posterior superior zone is also called safe zone and has good quality bone for acetabular screw placement a screw of 35 mm can be safely used here however superior gluteal nerve and superior gluteal arteries are at risk of injury zone 2 or the posterior inferior zone is close to these important neurovascular structures sciatic nerve inferior gluteal nerve and vessels internal pudendal vessels and the pudendal nerve screws here should preferably be under 25 mm zone 3 or the antero inferior zone is close to obturator nerve and vessels may be injured if screws are improperly placed the quality of bone for screw placement is also not as good as the posterior superior or the posterior inferior quadrants also it's not advisable to use screws of over 20 mm in this zone zone 4 or the antero superior zone has thin plate of bone and external iliac vessels are close by an attempt to place an acetabular screw here is likely to lacerate these vessels and may cause fatal bleeding hence it's called zone of death and it needs to be avoided One of the complications is seen more often in uncemented femoral stem fixation than in cemented femoral stem fixation is periprosthetic fracture. This happens both in press fit and line to line fixation for different reasons. In press fit it is due to excessive hoop stress and it is treated in acetabulum by adding a screw or two if the prosthesis is less stable. in femur a long stem or addition of cables may be necessary in line to line the fracture is due to point loading if the stem is firmly inserted and uh, the treatment here is to use a revision stem to bypass the fracture and supplement it with cables We have now come to the end of this video thank you for watching